Hey all, Board Game Rancher, where you'll find everything solo, tabletop, gaming, and more. And Bios Genesis, holy moly, got a, got a good one for you here. It's a solo review. I'm gonna attempt to show you a little bit what it's about, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Biogenesis. Cute little guy. Look at little little box. Little box. Big game in a little box. Now, I'm gonna go over this game very briefly. And because if I try to explain some of the rules here, just to give you an idea, you've got a very nice uh, player aid here. And then here's book one. And if you're into killing off brain cells, then by all means, well, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to suffer through this at some point. But as you can see, we're talking massive pages, microscopic writing, and tons of information for you to digest. But at its core. This is about creating life. Focusing on that, there's, and I'm gonna use very untechnological terms here. There's four phases of life. And you're trying to get to that fourth phase, essentially, playing solo. And the first phase is going to be spawned from Refugia. So it's gonna be one of these four landforms that's gonna activate and boom, you're gonna have something like this which is gonna have the possibility of, in this case, a red, a yellow, two blue cubes. You're gonna place, you're gonna be playing a color, you're gonna place you know, a marker of yours out there. You're gonna be, there's a top and a bottom, which matters. Things on the top, you're gonna to be able to eventually use to create life. That's gonna happen as you roll dice. These dice are gonna be moving these cubes back and forth and eventually you may have enough stuff up here and you roll the dice correctly and that you can begin the second phase of life so anything that's on the bottom would get removed you would flip this card over this clay mound has now spawned life you just match up your colors what you've got on there and now we have a gna lipid world so with this, I believe this is bacteria, second phase of life, you have really, and they all look the same. If I, if I flipped over any of these cards here, they all, they're all the same. And except for this flavor text, but they all operate the same. And so now what I'm gonna be doing is trying to generate cubes I've got a red cube, a yellow cube, and a blue cube to match up with one of these marine macroorganisms, and there's eight of them here. So I want to get, if I wanted to create uh, opa, opabinia, I would need to get two red cubes, two yellow, two green, and a blue. And uh, the trilobites you can see on the left there, that's what you have to get in cubes. So your markers don't count. Once you have created that, and, and you're going to create that by using these upgrades, if you will, you're going to attach these upgrades to your life. And in that way, you're going to add cubes to your organism here. And you can even upgrade the upgrade. So I can flip this over, and boom, now producing a blue and a green cube. There's whole, all sorts of rules in, in how you can purchase these upgrades. And when you're playing solo, you're gonna have to worry about parasites attaching to your organism. This viroid attaching to my microorganism here, and snatching off these cubes, which now no longer count towards me trying to get to the third phase of life, which is this marine macroorganism. But once I have 
got enough cubes out here to uh, create life. Well, let's just say that I've got all these cubes. What would happen is I would take those, those cubes. Uh, you basically pay the cubes off of your organism here, and it becomes this. So I would have to take off two reds and, and a yellow and a green and a blue. Anything left over, I might be able to place in here. But after I paid my costs, then I'd be able to put this here. And now I'm at the third phase of life. And now perhaps I have, you know, I'm, I'd be right here and I'd have this. Maybe I, maybe I assimilated that parasite into my macroorganism here. So really the card under does no longer matters. It's all about this card. And now, instead of purchasing upgrades via these cards, you're going to just purchase straight up just, just cubes. Yellow cubes, green cubes, blue cubes. And once I have all of those filled up, once I have, you know, and there's names, there's all these, you know, heart, you know, it's important to have a heart, blood, pigment, anus, you know, hard to, it's, you know, uh, it's a understated thing. But you want an anus, and then what? A gizzard, incubated cocoon. Anyway, to move from plat, flat, <laughs> flatworms to the fourth stage of life, which is really what you're going for, which is a terrestrial animal. Once this is all filled out, boom, you flip this over, and you are now earthworms in this case. And now you can max out your earthworms by getting these last few cubes on here. And that's ultimately what you're trying to do is build yourself up to this. So how does that occur? With a whole mumble jumble bunch of rules and stuff. So looking just very quickly here, this is this is essentially it. We're gonna we draw an event card, then you assign your markers, then you have to roll for phase one life if you have it, roll for phase two life if you have it, make purchases, and that's it. Simple really. You roll a lot of dice, hang out in the green rust fumeral, and create life. Enjoy your world. But you know, you realize it's not that simple. 42 pages in to that book, and then another whatever pages in on this 22 and then you got this which tells you creating life ain't so simple but really when you you kind of keep it to its basic form you just understand the colors you know those reds again not only do they give you money to buy stuff but they also protect you from from heat and uh the blues as i mentioned they well anyway they all have purposes the colors kind of just once you get the colors down it becomes much more simplified and manageable. But if I were to play around, you'd flip over an event. It's going to tell you which of the landforms is active, and you get to flip that over. And then you get to, to cycle the deck. Basically, you put the top card on the bottom. They call it roiling. You find that there's so much terminology in this game, it gets in the way of learning the game. But once you know the game, then it's kind of fun to go back to the terminology. Anyway. Then you would go through these series of events. All of these are basically designed to kill your organism. How it kills your organism is removes cubes and your markers. That's, that's basically what it does. And depending on what colors of cubes and markers you have out there, you'll have protection from the various things. Like this, you need red cubes or markers to protect you from this, this heat extreme. For just as one example. But anyway, so this also tells you... Uh, what's active and then what comes available to create life. So oddly enough, it's actually this clay mound again. So then once that's happened, then you would assign something. So I might assign my one cube there. If I had uh, green markers in my tableau here, I'd be able to assign more markers, but I don't. Then you have to roll for phase two life. Each marker, you get to roll two dice and each cube you get to roll one die. So when this comes out, you put these 
again, these cubes down here, and we'd roll. In this case, we'd roll two dice. Then we have to look over here and we can see that we're in a, we're in a heat. So there's a lot of heat that'll help our growth. And uh, with that in mind versus the other one is when there's a basically a cold spell. So when we're currently in this heat spell, one, twos, and threes, we'll move a cube up. So I rolled a two and I rolled a six down here. It's saying if you roll a six, you're gonna have to move a cube down. But first you get to move something up and then anytime you move something down or basically off, you're going to get money for it. And so I would maybe, I don't know, maybe I want a, a yellow money. I would move that up for the two. And then I would move it back down for that six. And that gives me a yellow money. And these are used for a variety of things, but ultimately you use them to purchase your upgrades. These are... Your upgrades are called mutations. When you can call it mutations, it almost sounds like a bad thing, but it's they're not. So then if I had phase two life, we would do the Darwin roll. Now phase two life is gonna be in your tableau. Right now, phase one life is always out on the board, available for everybody while well, you're only playing solo. But phase two life, don't have it. So then uh, purchases you would only make if you had something in your tableau again. If you had phase two or higher life, don't have that. So then we just go on. So that's basically just a quick and dirty little round right there. But eventually, you know, you flip over more of these and more landforms become active. So in this case, now we got the cosmic landform becomes active. So we put out, wait, we don't actually, we yet. And we look and we have to cycle these, these decks here again. And then it tells me uh, two, actually two, come from the skies. So we'd have two refugia here available. Phase one life to develop. I'd put the cubes out. And then, you know, and I can switch this. There's all sorts of rules to how many markers you can have out there, when you can move them. And you're just trying to build up enough cubes up here to make it worth your while to then flip the card over if you've managed to. Now, like right now, I'd roll two, three, four, five, six dice for this. Each cube adds another die to it, which makes it harder to keep your organisms alive, but you can add your money to cover up these things so that certain die rolls don't kill your organism. So there's going to be this push and pull back and forth. And eventually, though, you should end up with being able to flip this stuff over, and create life like if i had maxed out that particular refugia my life would look something like this i've got lots of protection against heat shields and lots of ways to create more money this gives me a reroll. Uh, this protects me from from other things that would kill me atrophy basically if i rolled fives and sixes when i have to do my darwin roll on this I'd roll two, three, four, five, six dice again and see what happens. So let's see, here's six dice. Let's see what happens. And any ones would give me a blue money, but I didn't roll any ones. And triples, so it's triple four during my Darwin roll, that would give me a blue money. So I'd get a little blue. These are called catalysts, by the way, but, and then they're called enzymes and other things and you know, la, 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 all the jargon. But anyway, money, blue money. And then, uh, see here, these twos don't do anything. Threes don't do anything. Fives and sixes would, would cause atrophy, but I'd get to reduce those by the number of blue, uh, chromosomes that I have here. So, uh, but that didn't happen. So my organism survived the Darwin roll and actually generated one bit of money. That money then I could use to make purchases. I could spend a blue money to purchase a blue something as long as it's active. And then bam, that goes there. I would be on my way. And then of course you've got all these little symbols. Now I've got a little bit more of a heat shield there. It's Red Queen. As I mentioned, parasites are gonna come and attack your organism but you can use this red queen to attack them back. It basically gives you a, a way to, to get your cubes back. 
HGT that allows you to move your markers under very certain circumstances, <laughs> all sorts of then you you know you upgrade this and you've got a whole new host of holy crap. So look at all that stuff now. You know DNA now only sixes will make me atrophy, not fives and sixes. Now I could use any color to buy anything out there. Anywho, hopefully that gives you just a quick idea of what strain you're going to go through this, you know, each each time. And then and if you haven't created life, basically, uh, by the time you're out of this event deck, you die. If you um, if you get four of the same type of atmosphere, you know, be it heat or cold in the same in a row, then uh, Armageddon and you, you basically die. And so, so oh, that broke it up there. So then just keep going. Oh, now I've got two. And then that doesn't change it. And then, oh, now I got three. And then, oh, that's, nope, that still didn't change it. Oh, okay, then that would have broke it up. Almost went into Armageddon there. But anyway, it's a vent deck times the game for you. All right, let's go talk about this. Holy, I mean, just like, <sighs> this game is so much on that muchy muchness side of much nitty. It is, I mean, it's this tiny little box. It's the most complicated game in the tiniest little box I've ever played. I mean, this game is a study. You, you want to learn how to play this game, you got to study it. And, and you got to break down its, its, its this, this rule book that's just like in all this like complicated jargon. And I, I tried to demonstrate it there in, in its most basic form. You know, four phases of life, and you got four colors to work with. Go! You get a whole lot of dice. There's a lot of luck involved. There's some, some strategy involved getting ahead of myself, you know, I like the game. I've purchased Megafauna, which is the second in this, it's a trilogy. There's Bios, Genesis, Megafauna, and then Origins, I believe. And so right now we're just, just trying to create something, some life, you know, in this event, each, each flip of that event card represents 200 million years. So, so you're flying through time just to create a, a speck of life. And it very much makes you feel like just like, oh my gosh, what do I got to do to survive around here? It's fantastic in that way. But also frustrating in that way. And, and unless you're willing to put in the time to learn this game. And like I said, you got to research this rule book to just like, like decipher it. Little tiny packaged box. Let's just go through the list of the things. Just from a tactile standpoint, I like it. It's got a nice, it's got little fiddly bits all over to kind of move around and stuff. And, you know, it sets up. Now, if, if you play it like the way I play it, well, I think it would set up the same. I mean, you can set this game up in five minutes. It's insane how, how heavy this game is, how quickly you can set up in a tiny little box. And it's going to take up, you know, it's going to take up a good two, three, two by three foot, you know, a good coffee table size, be comfortable. Uh, portable is all get out because it's just a tiny box. And to put it away, just like you can, you can pull it out, play it, put it back. And if you play the way I play solo, you can do all of that in like an hour. So a heavy four, solid four plus game here. Weight wise. That makes it harder for me to know what to talk about next. Put my little doohickey back up there. So where was I at? Tons of replayability. And, and I mean, it, it doesn't, it, there's, there's very few, relatively speaking, refugia to, to work with. There's, there's four different landforms, and those are going to come out, and you can build life on all of them. But then there's the dice rolling, and then there's the eight macroorganisms that you're, you're trying to achieve. So it seems kind of limited, but it just doesn't feel limited. And just like when you're playing, just the dice just, just, just make you do all sorts of weird stuff that you just got to react to. And so lots of replayability there from a strategy standpoint. It's not, there's not, I mean, there's strategy here. Definitely. And as, and as I keep playing the game, I'm starting to get it a little bit more and a little more. And I'm up to, I'm, I'm approaching 10 plays now. But uh, but the dice just, you know, you, you get some bad dice rolls. And that's, but that's you know, I kind of, it's a little frustrating. But at the same time, that's life. That's, that's, no, ain't nobody said it was going to be easy. And it ain't. So, and the way I play solo is, is different than the way it's introduced in the book. And I'm just trying to create life. And it's hard as hell the way I've come to play it. And as far as the mechanics go, that's 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 the biggest barrier here is the way the mechanics are explained in the rulebook. 
I don't like the way they're explained in the rule book. It's, it's too complicated. But if you just get and you know what the colors do and how they work and what they protect you from, they, they've kind of both, they've all got like kind of this dual nature to them. You know, the reds, for instance, help you, you make money, which are enzymes or catalysts or whatever you want to call them, basically money to build a, to build up life and get it from phase one to phase four. But they also protect you. They're a heat shield. So they protect you from certain events that will try to, you know, break you down through heat. And, you know, and the greens do the same thing, except for they're mainly uh, to put more markers out to start life quickly and also to protect you from oxygen spikes. So, so once you get all this stuff down, then, then, then it's fun to go back in the rule book and learn, oh, okay, well, gosh, when it's this, then it's a chromosome, when it's this, it's an organ, and all of this is a pair, you know, it's a, a diseased uh, mutation, and once this, then it's, you know, the cubes, and as you move things around, they're little endosymbionts, and they're oh, all this stuff that's just like, blah. I mean, it's just, it's a foreign language. I mean, unless you're really into biology and you know all this stuff already, but for, for just learning a game, for the sake of learning a game, I feel like there should have been just a, a quick rule set that just was like, here's the colors, here's what they do, here's just a quick rundown without using all the craziness of, of the, the language involved with trying to create life and just broke it down so you get into the game and then, then it's fun to go and look at all the, kind of put the theme to it. Ultimately, you get trapped into thematically applying all the rules because you can't learn this game without learning all the thematic jargon, the way it's presented. So there's some great theme to be enjoyed here, but you may not get that far if, if you, while you're just trying to learn the game. So the rule book, I think, is, is kind of a hot mess still. You know, this is the second edition of this game. I'm glad I waited until the second edition of the game, but there's still just a lot of stuff that I just find kind of just very difficult to assimilate. The difficulty of the solo variant is what I found to be just the most stunning. It, it was, you know, I played it all the way through the way it was shown, demonstrated, and then and, and I, and I won. And I was like, you know, okay. And I went through and I looked again and I realized, okay, I hadn't, I hadn't played a few things, right? But I played it again, won. Like, and it took like two, three hours for a game. And that's very, I don't know, it was just very unsatisfying. And so then I looked and I was like, I, I got to be playing something wrong. Found out, no, I wasn't. People were having the same experience. And then there were some fan-made variants and some, some, some differences that I have since taken on and enjoyed the game far more now. Now that I can play it in an hour, I'm just trying to create one level four life, you know, phase four life, one terrestrial living organism. It's, it's, it's zeroed in and it's blisteringly difficult. And, and it's perfect. It's just, it, it fits my idea of trying to create life, which is just chaos. And in the events and the dice are trying to kill you and do most of the time. And I love it. I love that. So I like, I don't like the fact that the solo variant provided was, was like unsatisfactory, especially on a second edition try. But thank goodness, uh, some, some fan made variantness came to the rescue and, and saved this game for me. And, uh, I enjoy playing it was just one handed, basically you're supposed to play two handed officially and just, just zeroing in on, in fact, what I, what I've been recently been playing is just shuffling up because you play the, the color that you play changes the game and how you play the game. If you play red, blue, yellow, or green, because the rules of that color apply to you. And then you go after a certain life form and I just shuffle up the eight and I go for, for one of them. Some are easier than others. And I love it. I just like, and then you just, and then it's, you know, you just get into it and you roll some crazy dice and you get some crazy events and it just obliterates you and it's just fun. And so I enjoy it now that I've, that I've come to understand this different way of playing it solo. I'd recommend looking that up. Um, anyway, that's, it, it, hit, it hit me in the right, hit all, plucked all my strings there, but not the official way of playing it solo. So anyway, I'm looking forward to getting into the, uh, second um, of the tr trio and looking into a megafauna, which I think you start creating, I don't know, more and more animals and, and, and real creatures, you know, that uh, just, I don't know, uh, until you get to, I believe, 
um, the origins, which is more about creating human life or something. I, I really don't know, but I do know that people say this next one is a little more megafauna is a, the second in the series is a little more accessible. I don't know. Maybe it's just because you've gone through what you've gone through with Genesis. It's like, how could you get any worse? Probably can't. So <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it. That's it for Biogenesis. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think or any comments down below. And until next time, I'm okay. It's an out.